Alrighty folks, this is Alan recording another comprehensive Magic the Gathering Arena draft video. Yep, we're not doing the sealed open because um, I'm not a big fan of sealed in general, so we're just going to fire off another um, strict saving draft. Also keep in mind, um, I mean, I'm also busy um, on Sunday, so I definitely don't have time to make it even if I um, even if I make it to day two, I won't have enough time to play. So um, yeah, let's just do another... Strict Haven draft, and we, and most of, and most of the time I've been getting more than four wins, so <clears throat> I'm actually getting more value than I would um, doing the um, the uh, arena open, which you know is definitely very risky and high variance, but you do have a chance to win two thousand dollars, which is really nice. But if you don't get it, then uh, you know, I guess you spent like thirty five dollars, so maybe it's worth it. I don't know, but I just don't like doing sealed in general, and the opens are just. Um, you have to be very precarious because um, it's there's a lot of very good drafters and um, I mean lot, lots of very good uh, sealed decks out there. So even if you do your best, it might not. It's it's definitely very hard to to uh, try. Um, pack one, pick one. There's a putrefy. Um, putrefy is really strong and very splashable. I'm not a big fan of Witterbloom, but if you have putrefy and a lot of life gain synergies and blood researchers, it's really strong. Combination is a trap. Academic dispute I think is a bit of a sleeper. Uh, not in like an amazing card, but still can be pretty solid in certain decks, especially if you can force a trade and learn. It can be quite nice. Rip apart, fine removal. It's definitely splashable as well. And then at common, there's a study break, mage duel, pilgrim of the ages. Uh, the most flexible option, if I was to pack one, pick one, would probably be the uh, mage duel, since it can go pretty much in any green deck, and it's just removal. And removal is, again, always great and limited, but probably just take the putrefy, since it's just a stronger card. Um... It's not as situational as you would need for a mage duel, and still very splashable in the set. And, uh, <coughs> yeah. Seems like the pick here. Also, the fact that it answers artifacts can deal with problematic bombs like Sparring Regiment and, Sil and the Poet's Quill. And, yeah, it will, it will be Putrefy. Putrefy was in this pack, probably mage duel, but we'll take Putrefy. Following up Putrefy, I mean, Eye Twitch and Pest Summoning seem pretty fun. I mean, I believe it's very important in Witterbloom to have as much pest summonings as possible. Eye Twitch, on the other hand, is sought more stronger in Silver Quill, since Silver Quill is looking to mostly um, enhance the creatures. A uh, one mana, one one that uh, that pings for one every turn and learns is okay in Witterbloom, but not super amazing. So it's probably between Eye Twitch, Frost Trickster, Pest Summoning, and Eureka Moment here. There's also the Archway Common in Campus, but I'd rather just take um, Environmental Sciences. So, I mean, sticking with the theme of Putrefy, I really think the um, yeah, I, I really think the uh, Winterbloom decks need a lot of Pest Summonings. So I'm actually leaning towards Pest Summoning here over the Eye Twitch. Um, Eye Twitch, I think again is better off in Silver Quill, but uh, I think it's very important to get really get the Pest Summonings down and have them as lessons for the uh, the Winterbloom deck. So I think I'll take the Pest Summoning over Eye Twitch. But, um, yeah, I think they're kind of close. Um, okay, I guess we'll be drafting Witterbloom since the Mage Hunter's Onslaught is pretty late. There's also Hall of Oracles. But if we can just kill a bunch of their stuff and, um, and just chip in damage over time in a Witterbloom deck, we can mostly, we mostly win that way. Whereas Hall of Oracles is better off in Silver Quill since you're looking to enhance your creatures. Witterbloom, not as much. You're just trying to look for drain effects to drain the opponent out, and then have re menacing um, blood researchers that grow very large with life gain synergies. So I think I like the Mage Hunter's Onslaught, and uh, best card in this pack is probably the Hall, but I think at this point we just want to draft Witterbloom. And there's our Blood Researcher. <coughs> Excellent. Definitely a very important common to have in the uh, Witterbloom decks. Otherwise, you aren't going to go get very far. The problem with Witterbloom is that even though you have all the great removal in black, the creatures just aren't very threatening. Whereas the Blood Researcher is very threatening. And if you can um, uh, enhance this over time with incremental life gain, it can definitely get out of hand. So I, I'm liking the Blood Researcher here. Otherwise, between Leylight, Invocation, and Expand Anatomy, probably Expand Anatomy since it's a nice lesson to learn. And um, Leyline is better in... It's, it's a fine one of in Winterbloom, but Winterbloom is not necessarily looking to ramp. They're just looking to um, drain the opponent out and be more aggressive. And Hunt for Specimens, excellent. Wouldn't mind inkling something as a good lesson, but um, Hunt gives us more Pest for the Winterbloom deck and helps us learn our Pest Summonings and other future lessons. 
Inkling something could also make the cut, but at double, at double black, we, we need more fixing for it first. So definitely going to take the hunt for specimens. And I guess we'll be drafting Winterbloom for the first time. Even though I've taught, I've stayed, I stay multiple times that I'm not a big fan of it. I think it's fine going for it. And Winterbloom could use more life gain with Essence Infusion. So, uh, would be better if we pick up more of those 1 mana 1 1 Menacers or if the Eye Twitch wheels. But uh, still solid since it gives us a bit of life. And uh, if we put this onto a large creature and drain the and gain a bunch of life, it can be hard for opposing decks to race. Pretty late expressive iteration, so Prismari could also be open. But we're to. We're drafting black at this table. Uh, this pack, pretty abysmal. Is there a chance we uh, pivot out of um, Silver Quill? There's the Novice Dice Sector, but I think it's pretty awful, even in Witterbloom. I could just take it anyways, just to stay on theme. There's also a chance I can end up in Silver Quill, so maybe I just take a, a Spiteful Squad here, in case we end up just splashing green. And uh, playing the rest of these other black cards. So, could see that being reasonable. So, let's take the Spiteful Squad. And take an Inkling Summoning as another lesson we can look up in Witterbloom. Seeing this pretty late is a sign. There's also Explosive Welcome, which is really powerful. Especially in the Teamer decks that are looking to ramp. And um, also great in Prismari if you can get there with the uh, Stormkill Narnus. But uh, in, in Quandrix... In Quandrix is nice. Quandrix just pairs very, very well with Prismari, especially if you can just splash a single red. Since it has so much ramp, you can just get to Explosive Early's Welcome and blow the opponent out. But uh, here we're just going to take an Inkling Summoning. And uh, this pack is pretty bad too. Just take a random Moldering Karak. Or you can just take an Introduction to Prophecy as a fine lesson. Usually they're just better 4 drops in Winterbloom that you don't care about the Moldering Karak. So maybe just take the lesson here. And hopefully we find more ways to learn. And haven't drafted Witterbloom at all, and I've stated that Witterbloom I think is one of the worst archetypes, but I could be proven wrong. The Servant is fine, gives us a little bit of life gain for the Blood Researcher, so I don't hate it. Crushing Disappointment I also don't mind. Um, but if we pick up more Blood Researchers, their Servant can be fine just to gain life and have a random 3 mana 3-2. Three, Fill a creature that can hit hard if we can clear a path, so don't hate it here. Spring Main Servant, yeah, it's it's pretty underwhelming, but um, has synergy in Witterbloom. And again, since Witterbloom is lacking aggressive threats, you might want a Servant just to uh, hit for three at times. And then we'll just take a Quandrix Campus in case we splash for white. I mean green, I mean. But overall, I think Witterbloom is where we want to be since it seems re really open. And we first picked the Putrefy, which is a solid removal spell. Wouldn't mind the Blood Researchers or Walls and Wow. Late Snow Day. This card is really fantastic. Don't know why people are passing this up. This card can almost become a complete blowout. And it just provides card advantage too, so it's also great. Definitely a great card to first pick as well. Take a Dusk Mage. Okay, and we know we're drafting Winterbloom here. Guys, so gonna pick up more of those pest summoning tokens if we can, and uh, maybe pick up ways to uh, gain life and get more blood researchers for our deck. Okay, and yeah, that's a good three drop. Otherwise, I mean, other great cards include the Return Pass Caller. I guess there's also Mage Duel I could consider. Uh, we do have a Mage Hunter's Onslaught as removal already. And for the most part, um, Winterbloom creatures don't tend to be pretty large. With two toughness, it's not as reliable as it would with uh, like a Pledge Mage. Um, a Winterbloom Pledge Mage can fight pretty well, but overall, we don't seem to have many good creatures that can fight as of right now. So Cow's Blood Mage is just solid, gives us a Pest Token, can cycle itself to draw a card. Just an all-around good card. I think I like it. Not a bomb, but a rare that you wouldn't be too um, unhappy with opening. There's a environmental science, but there's also Lash of Malice um, here in the pack. And I think we just want the Lash since we know what colors we are already. And I don't really have a color to splash for with environmental science. I like how this card can just give you life, at, um, can gain you life, can help you hit your land drops, can help you splash as well. But Lash is just too efficient in these Witterbloom decks. Ruta is also being passed. But, um, okay, some good cards here. Umbro Juke I like. 
just can give us um, a, a flying creature and can make the opponent sacrifice some things. Anatomy is also fine, but uh, overall this pack just doesn't look great. Best card in this pack is probably just Guiding Voice and Expanded Anatomy. But, and Umbral Juke, so we'll just take the Umbral Juke. Could use more 2 drops. More Hunt for Specimens would be great. More Pest Summonings would also be great. What's this? Gnarl Professor. So I am reading my signals. Pick four Gnarl Professor. So we have to be the um, the Witterbloom drafter because there's no way in hell this can get to uh, pick four. And this card is really good. And yeah, also helps gives me more ways to learn. So going to be my pick here. If not, another Lash of Malice. But yeah, Gnarl Professor is a really nice rare. Especially in the deck in an archetype that doesn't hit really hard. It's nice to have the Gnarl Professor do smash in once you... Uh, Cleared, cleared a path of removal spells, so I'm liking it here. And one of my favorite first picks in this set. It's not the thing is, it's not a busted card. It's just a good card, and uh, the fact that it can just learn is nice. Here, I don't think I want to grab the lesson since I'm an Inkling summon already. Uh, I like the professor, and I also like the Leech fanatic, but I think it just has to be the Leech fanatic since I'm missing a bunch, a bunch of two drops. If I don't curve out with two drops, my removal spells aren't going to be as impressive since I need to pressure the opponent early on. So I'm liking the Leech Fanatic. Professor would also be great since it creates a pest token, but currently don't have too many sacrifice synergies. Whereas if we curve Leech Fanatic into Blood Researcher, it's really strong. And again, we need two drops in this deck. So we're probably just aggressive Witterbloom from what it looks like. Just try to curve out and kill their stuff, smash, and go from there. We're not really trying to be a mid-range deck, I don't think. Ooh, Mage Hunter. Ooh, another hunt for specimens. Environmental Sciences. I probably want the other hunt. Mage Hunter is okay, can give us another fine 4-drop, but there's always decent 4-drops like Professor and the, um, the uh, whatchamacallit, the um, Spectre of Fence. Also would like a dual land, but gotta take Hunt for Specimens here, just having more ways to learn, more ways to create Pus Tokens on turn 2. And then here, um, another Blood Researcher seems awesome. There's also Scourge Colony, but Colony is better off in Quandrix. Containment Breach could also be a fine lesson to look up, but more situational. Just want my Blood Researcher since I'm trying to be aggressive. And it's just one of uh, the best ways to uh, kill the opponent. Lash of Mouse versus the Bl Blackish Trosh is also pretty interesting. The Blackish Trudge might not be necessary in this deck. Um, it's also pretty decent though, but maybe we just want a second Lash of Malice. Like, we're not trying to be a grindy deck overall, and overall our threes are looking good already. We have a Spring Main Servant, which can um, gain life on turn three. So I think I like the Lash to have extra removal in this type of deck. And then just take the Uncommon for the Vault. But we're definitely in the right archetype, I have to imagine. Since um, we got a pretty late Gnarl Professor and Hunt for Specimens. And the Blackish Trudge got passed to us, to us, which is mostly a Witterbloom card. But I think I like the second Lash again, just to have more cheaper removal against smaller threats. Since we have enough threes already in this type of deck. Ooh, late environmental sciences. Has to be the pick over crushing dis disappointment. Another way to gain life. And uh, also help us splash and fix, of course. Helps us hit our land drops. So going to take it over crushing disappointment. But disappointment could also be reasonable. Now, uh, now I can take a crushing disappointment. Don't think we're a reckless Um We're not ramping, so just... Take the Disappointment as a fine 4-drop. And then hopefully we pick up like the Wall that can gain life to help the Blood Researchers. Or some nice bombs in Witterbloom. Deck overall looks fine, but again, just nothing too exciting. Can maybe get up to 4 or 5 wins, but 7 wins is going to be a little bit difficult unless we 
<coughs> really string together a bunch of removal spells and bombs in this deck. Another Inkling Summoning seems good. One, two, three, four lessons. One, um, two, th three ways to learn. Leylight Invocation could make the cuts if we need some more top end. can always be reasonable. Maybe we, we can play maybe Adventurous Impost, who knows. Um, emergence Sequence is great. I mean, now that we have the Leylight Invocation, I'm liking the Emergence Sequence here. Um, can help us splash and help us ramp a bit on turn two, which is always nice. There's also Agonizing Remorse, which is okay, but nothing exciting. Back one pick one, probably take Blade Historians since it's just too powerful, and maybe try to draft some sort of Lore Hold aggro deck. But uh, Emergence Sequence would probably be my second pick, and then third pick would be Heated Debate. Um, Killian also pretty close with Heated Debate and Emergence Sequence, but gonna take the Sequence here. So then we can maybe ramp a bit in this deck, which is fine. Um, this pack, do I just take a Daemogoth Woe Eater? Pretty good pest summonings and a hunt for specimens, so I don't hate it here. And even if it uh, doesn't, and even if you um, don't have any pest to sack, it, having it sack itself is also pretty solid, since you also just two for one the opponent by making them discard and you drawing a card. So I don't hate this card. Alternatively, there's another Leech Fanatic, which is fine. Could use some extra twos. But I'm um, hoping this can wheel since Demo Goth can be kind of fun. Ooh, our Mythic Uncommon Bookworm. There's also another Blood Researcher and Witterbloom Pledge Mage. <sighs> I mean, 8 mana is hard to get to, but this card can just win games. But maybe we just want a Witterbloom Pledge Mage in this type of deck. Yeah, this card is definitely a powerful bomb. We do have a bit of ramp with Emergence Sequence and maybe the Letter of Acceptance. But then uh, the rest of this deck doesn't really care about ramping. I think it's actually just a Pledge Mage here. We could use a good 5. And um, I don't think... If, if we knew for sure we had like multiple fuel trips to get to Bookworm over in Quandrix, this card would be fantastic. But I think it's just a Pledge Mage to give us a 5 drop. Ooh, Valandine. Wow. Yeah, getting rewarded now for reading the signals. See, this is, see guys, this is how you um, know how to draft. Because now we picked up our uh, Bomb... And I'm happy playing the Valentine on curve just on turn one, because if we can turn one this and hit and gain life, we can still um, trigger the Blood Researchers. And then if a um, if we still kill a non-creature token, um, um, Exalt if you do pay two, you can still like um, create a pest token for Demo Goth Woe Eater. So yeah, Valentine's a bomb plus Lizette. Lizette is a more um, interesting half, but I'm happy just casting Valentine on turn one if I have to in this type of deck. Um, and then, if I'm going to be playing Valentine, I don't mind a second Blood Researcher to give us more playables. The rest is also reasonable in the set, since um, it can usually snipe something very nice um, in the early game um, from the opponent's deck. Um, but I actually like the Blood Researcher here, and then maybe we can cut the Spring Main Servant. Although the Spring Main Servant can trigger life gain. Um, I think I like the Blood Researcher to, to make it so that I can um, easily just... I have three copies of these, so I, I think I like it here. Ooh, wow, and a Harness Infinity, pretty late. There's also Mage Duel. Harness Infinity, I think I have to take it here, since it gives us more insurance to the late game that um, <coughs> we can get back some resources and loop them back. Mage Hunter's Duel is also really fun as well. Maybe we don't need this. I mean, it's a nice grinding card, but maybe it's a trap. Maybe we just want Mage Duel to fight some things and win the game that way. I guess longer grindier matches, we want Harness Infinity. Um, in other matches, we might just want the Mage Duel. You know what, let's just take Mage Duel. I think I'm perfectly fine with that. And definitely a sign that we should be in, uh, again, Witterbloom. Um, Professor's Warning, I guess Plum the Forbidden can be quite, kind of nice. Giving us a bit of card advantage. Big play could also be reasonable. Um, I also don't mind Professor's Warning. Big play is also nice, though. Um, you know what? Let's just take um. Let's take a uh, professor's warning. This is just cheaper, I guess. And another mage duel, okay. And then take a Witterbloom Campus, Agonizing Remorse. I wouldn't mind, but uh, if we're gonna be going 17 lands, we don't mind just um, throwing in the Witterbloom uh, Campus here. And then just take our Novice Dissector, which we're never going to play, but still fits the theme of these decks. Wow, another Blood Researcher. I don't think I can play four copies of Blood Researcher, but three should be enough. So I think I'll just take a Reckless Amplomancer. 
just in case. And then Infuse with Vitality could be a thing as well. Don't hate the Infuse. And then maybe we just cut the Essence Infusion from this deck. Since it's a nice combat trick that also gains us life. We could also splash for Eureka Moments, but I don't think we need it. So this deck looks kind of fun, um, not going to lie. We have a decent amount of removal and... Um, and uh, cheap creatures. The Harness Infinity would have been pretty interesting, but again, I don't think it's necessary. Like, it's a good sideboard card against a control deck, but again, just the efficiency of Mage Duel as a fight spell, I think it's just better. And then with 17 lands, I guess we can still just run something like this and we're all right. We have many ways to learn to um, grab lessons, so we can use the extra mana. So let's <coughs> look at the uh, learn cards that we have. Three ways to learn, okay, just three ways to learn, and then the lessons we can grab, environmental sciences, pest summoning, inkling summoning. We're mostly likely going to be interested in grabbing the inkling summoning and the pest summoning for the most part, and that's pretty much it. Looking at the deck, I like the ley line, I like the Witterbloom Pledge Mage, I like all my fours, threes are all looking good, Servant especially has synergy with Blood Researcher, but probably one more, more weaker <coughs> three drops. I, I'm also liking the Infuse as life gain. Since the life gain is also great with Lizette, if we can just trigger the life gain and just put counters everywhere, it's pretty much game over. And also can serve kind of like a Professor's Warning as well, since it just brings a creature back if it ends up dying. So kind of like giving a creature un, 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 indestructible, except it comes in tapped and you gain two life. So I guess we can just try something like this, and then mana base slightly favoring black, but I think we just keep it even split since we do need a decent amount of green, although we do need a lot of black here. We do need double green for the Lizette half, but I'm um, still probably keeping it 9-9 to just be safe. So, yeah, let's give this a spin and see how it goes. Um, yeah, and I like Valentina as our poster child. And I'm still fine playing him out on one. With triple um, Blood Researcher, it's possible that playing out the uh, Valentine on one <coughs> is very strong. And I think, again, we're, the fact that we're more aggressive means that we want the Mage Duel and not the Harness Infinity. But if Mage Duel was in this pack, again, the Harness Infinity would be pretty fun. And we could be like the more mid-range, grindier version. But definitely was in the right um, college since Lizette was passed to me and um, read the signals very well. Opening hand, we have Leech Fanatic into Blood Researcher, I think I'm keeping. Plus two solid removal spells in the early game to deal with two toughness threats. So it can definitely spiral out of control. And no Lash of Malice end of turn, so Leech Fanatic is most likely going to try to manage to get a hit in. Um, so if I play Blood Researcher and attack, he's most likely just going to trade. The question is, am I fine with that? I think I am. And hopefully he doesn't have removal for the Blood Researcher, but we do have a second one to follow up. And this just smashing him for three every turn is really gross. Pledge Mage, we can Lash. Um, I can always just play the Servin. But probably want to play the first Blood Researcher first and then Servin. I know he can probably gain life with the Pledge Mage on the way back, but... We can eventually, but I think this is more mana efficient of a play. And if he plays something more threatening, we can lash and then mage duel the fight. And then if we play the servant and we top deck a swamp, we can actually kill one of the pledge mages and also just um, gain life. Or this turn, I guess we can always lash and fight now, since he has two creatures here. And I think I'm fine using one mage duel here and saving one lash, because it's possible that. Um, 
I did this just a second last should be more relevant. This way, I can still keep up one lash. And wow, we managed to hit for five. That I have to kill. Don't think there's only. I don't. Yeah, so this is a reason why you want to save your lash of malices. And then this servant is really awesome here. And yeah, blood researcher definitely an important card that you want in Witterbloom. Otherwise, again, you won't have enough ways to apply pressure with all the removal spells. Because you don't really want to kill their creature and then hit for hit with two one one pests. Do this fine, but you can't really even block it. <coughs> My blood researchers, that is. Academic probation. What does this do? Um, so he can use on my Blood Researcher, but I can just attack. I guess it buys him one extra turn, but the main shield should just be lethal here, so... Yep, and that was pretty gross with... and stuck on three lands, we still managed to, um... kill them very quickly, so... If you're drafting Witterbloom, do not pass up those Blood Researchers, guys. I'm telling you, it's very important. Okay, we can hunt and then Callous Blood Mage, maybe drawing a card. Hopefully find green mana. I think I like this. Ooh, that's really good too. Dina is great. So probably need to find an answer to that. So I'm liking the hunt for specimens here. And then what do you want to grab from the sideboard? Can always just take an inkling summoning to start pressuring him. Alternatively, I think I need green mana as well, so could also just go for the environmental sciences. I mean, blood researchers into environmental sciences can be quite nice. So, but probably next turn I'm planning to just cast a Callous Blood Mage and draw a card. Hmm. Just in case, I think we might need environmental sciences in case we never hit our green. So I want to be a little bit more cautious here. And this to kind of ensure I at least hit my... At least, and even if I top deck a green source, I might need double green for the null Professor, so I think it's fine. And then hopefully we have two removal spells to maybe take out Dina or something scary like this Blood Researcher. I think I just cast the Chaos Blood Mage. Um, can draw a card, but maybe making a pest could be better. Yeah, maybe making a pest is just better. And then we can just say go. Maybe set up a Mage Hunter's Onslaught next turn with on the Blood Researcher, maybe. And then if we top that green mana, we can always <coughs> Blood Researcher and Environmental Sciences in the future. Question is, if he attacks with a blood researcher, do I double block? By making a pest, it does disincentivize him from attacking. I can always put two tokens in front of this. But I'm hoping I can get my blood researcher out to get some value first, so we'll see. Maybe see a fight spell. Devouring tendrils, okay. Alright, that's really good. So probably need to set up an onslaught on the blood researcher.
Gonna take four. Poet's Quill, wow, that's even more gross. At least we can maybe putrefy it the following turn after we hunters the uh, blood researcher. Yeah, so I think we need to hunters D3-3. The next turn we can set up a putrefy on the um, Poet's Quill and then we can still attack him two here. Yeah, this is just going to be a problem if he just keeps draining me with it. So. <coughs> Demogoth Wool Eater, not going to do it. Okay, I guess we need to cast the Environmental Sciences now. Finally get our green mana, so luckily I grab the Environmental Sciences. Play land and then say go. Keep up the Putrefy. If he tries to equip it onto the 2-1 Flyer, um, then I can still Putrefy it. And um, that's, that could just be better, so. I could also kill Dina, but I think killing the equipment is more important. And I can still take three, which is fine. And we can always chump block in the future. <laughs> Mage Hunter's Duel. That's a, that's a nice one. Um, but he could blow me out with some sort of removal spell, so maybe I'm better off playing the Demogoth Wool Eater here. And then I'm still fine attacking for with two of these pests. Would love double green to get a blood researcher out to grow. So I'm hoping I can find a second green source next turn. Ooh, I think I want to fight that instead. Yeah, I think I want to fight that instead, so how about we sacrifice a 1-1 token? Only if that was uh, double green. Okay, so we kind of have to mage duel this 5-5. Uh, five five. He might just sack it to Dina. If he sacks it to Dina, the question is, am I fine at trading the Demogoth Wool Eater for Dina? I think I am. session, that's quite good. Necrotic fumes, not bad. He can exile my Wool Eater, but... I'll have a Gnarlet Colony to follow up. And I also don't gain the life, so that's kind of annoying. 
If I grab land, I can narrow Professor into um, Inkling Summoning to trade for his Inkling Summoning. Alright, I mean, at least I two for one the opponent, and he lost his uh, lesson. So now what I can do is I can cast a Gnarled Professor here. And then I do want to grab maybe an Inkling Summoning or a Pest Summoning. Um, or an Introduction to Prophecy. Not sure. Um, maybe the Inkling Summoning is still the way to go. We can still cast it, and then keep the land in hand in case he has a way to make me discard. Ooh, a Pledge Mage, okay. So we probably need to stay back and not get too aggressive with the Nard Colony here. Emergent Sequence is nice too, so now what we can do is we can play land, play Emergent Sequence. Get another forced. Play the blood researcher and then attack for two. And then I, I'm gonna decide where now I want to scry on my upkeep, which is gonna only leave me room for three mana, which might not be worth it. So probably don't want to scry on my upkeep here. Cemetrist, okay. Another Blood Researcher seems fine. And then we can still scry end of turn. And we can say go, we can always chump block with the 1-1. One, one. I, mean, I guess we need to take out the Pledge Mage because he's, he can just constantly um, drain me once he casts his Magecraft with the Dina, so I think it's very important to take that out. <coughs> As opposed to Master Symmetrist. Don't think I need second Blood Researcher. It's kind of overkill. Lash of Malice could be nice. So, let's see. I could attack with the 2-1. He blocks. I use Lash of Malice to, to finish. Lash of Malice to finish it off. I can also attack with a 5-4 and a 2-1. Maybe I just do that. Attack with both the 5-4 and a 2-1. And then if he blocks with the Master Symmetrist, I'm fine trading it with the Lash of Malice here. And then if he wants to trade the Pledge Mage, I'm also down for that, so we'll let damage happen. And then we can Lash of Malice on the Master Symmetrist to finish it off, and then Scry in the turn still. Keep in mind, again, he can trigger Magecraft to drain me with Dina, which is very annoying. So I need to find answers to that as well, and then we can say go. Hopefully I can find- hopefully I can just chump block with this 1-1 and grow my Blood Researchers. Or maybe he's crying to something better. Surprised he didn't sacrifice his Letter of Acceptance and the turn. <coughs> Guess he could be splashing Double Whites. So he can trigger Magecraft and then drain me to death, which I'm very definitely afraid of, so... Luckily he's just not grabbing anything here. So I can just keep hitting in with the Gnarled Colony. Gnarled, prof Gnarled Professor, I mean. Land to the bottom. Do I want to scry again? guess that's too late. Yeah, let's just attack with the um, Null Professor. I could also attack with both Blood Researchers. If I, if I attack with all, what happens? Um, he can block here, chump, but then I'll be dead, so I think I just attack with the uh, Null Professor just to be safe, and hopefully he doesn't have anything here to um, save his Pledge Mage, otherwise I'm screwed. Yeah, I probably have something here. I think we take out the uh, Witterboom Pledge Mage over Dina, or just list Dina first. Uh, 
Um, interesting. Yeah, let's listen. Let's actually list Dina first because um, that way, if he has a pump effect with the Witterbloom Fledge Mage, she ends up dying. And I can still chump with the one-one token, so I think this is fine. So he just doesn't drain me over time with Dina. Like, sure, he can still gain life with Magecraft, but it's not as bad as it would be if um, if Dina was around. And I can still put the one-one pest in front of it, grow my blood researchers in attack. So I don't mind a trade here. It is a trade down, but I think it's worth it. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh, that's why you're splashing for Blonde the Sky. Yeah, I can't win against that. That's just a complete bomb. I mean, maybe I can win if I manage to kill the Pledge Mage and gain some life. So, alright, let's see what we have. We don't, we, we, don't, we don't want swamps. Do I have an option here? Not really. Describe the campies. And hopefully we pick up something here. Mage Duel. What can Mage Duel do? I guess Mage Duel can fight a 2-1. Two, two I mean, I guess it can force a trade, but then this is only 6-7-8 um, damage. 6 damage, so it's probably not even worth keeping. But yeah, I can't be the bomb like blow out this guy. Although there's infused vitality, but I'm probably just dead from uh, six times two is twelve anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's really annoying. Just GGs. I mean, I could. I mean, if I had mage duel, I guess, and infused vitality, that would have worked. Yeah, if I just had a way to sacrifice something, it would have worked. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah, it's just not going to do it. I can't be a bomb like Blot out the sky. That card just literally wins games by itself. So that was really unfortunate, and we were kind of close too, I, th I think. I think if we had one more trigger off the Pledge Mage, we would have gotten there maybe. I guess it's still only 8, 9 damage. If we, if we just had a way to gain life, I guess, with the, the Mages, we would have been fine. But uh, we didn't, so... That was kind of awful. It was definitely an awful feeling. Alright, uh, Blood Researcher. Emergent Sequence, Blood Researcher. So we have four mana available. And yeah, this is nice. Always curving out with the Emergent Sequence into eventual Leyline Invocation. Let's grab our green source now. And then we can always drop, drop the Blood Researcher here. Ooh, Callous Blood Mage too. Um... I guess I'm more interested in hitting my land drops. I don't really have any life gain synergy for now, so I think we just drop the Chaos Blood Mage. And then we just want to draw a card, right? And then attack two. Kelpie Guide is really good. There's Blood Researcher. Um, yeah, I would like to set up a Blood Researcher turn. I also wouldn't mind trading the Forest for the 2 2, honestly. So I think we just attack with both and then play out Blood Researcher. And then we can maybe eventually hunt for specimens, find the... Um, I mean, we can eventually maybe play Blood <coughs> Researcher, hunt for specimens, find the uh, life gain 
a land grabber thing and then just go from there. I could have also kept, killed a Kelpie guy, but again, I don't think it's necessary. And then my menace creature can still attack past the creature here. So, I think we've refined Trading Blood Researcher here, and the Callous Blood Mage, and keep the land back. And we also have an Infuse of Vitality to blow someone out. Um, yeah, I think I'm more interested in killing Kelpie Guide. And I can always use Infuse of Vitality if he has some sort of weird combat trick. Sure. Sure. And then we'll just play another Blood Researcher. Probably kill my land in a turn. Okay, that's fine. I can always hunt for specimens, maybe find a life gain. I think I might have to kill the Conspiracy Theorist though. Yeah, Mage Duel kill Conspiracy Theorist is nice, but I guess I can. what I can do is I can hunt first. Find our environmental sciences, cast Mage Duel, and use Callous Blood Mage to fight. Question is, is it my fight? Am I trying trading? I think I am. That's a good one, but we do have um, our removal spell to go along with it. Yep, just get going. Half free, wow. All the bombs, but we can just make them sack the creature. Wow, this is this is insane. Let's just cast the environmental sciences. <coughs> Grab our second green source. And then we'll make him sacrifice the creature. Wow, all the bombs in some sort of random Jeskai five color multicolor shenanigans deck, and we still manage to get them. Okay, sweet. So now we know that this deck is doing the right thing. And, you know, again, I say that Witterbloom is one of the worst guilds in the set if you if the things don't come together. But if it does, it's very good. Okay, opening hand, 2-drop, we have a Putrefy, Mage Duel, could use more creatures. The worst case scenario is we end up flooding, the best case scenario we can 2-drop into Blood Researcher, so I'll try it. Okay, don't want to see too many lands, please. Game, please don't give me a million lands. I can hopefully Mage Duel that Wooder Bloom Apprentice, and as I say that, we draw 2 lands in a row. So we can only hope for the best. Um, at least we can maybe fight this next turn for 3 mana. And that's kind of mana efficient, but I'm hoping I can combo it off with something else. Okay, Knowledge Professor. Guess I attack here. I mean, I would love to Mage Duel this, but it is kind of um, scary if he has a trick. Okay, let's see what trick he has. I mean that's fine. That's a good that's a pretty reasonable trade. And then we can always putrefy end of turn on something large that we're scared of. Mm, that's not scary. This is though. 
Um, I think I want flyers. And I can fight this really nicely. And this is two toughness, right? So what I can do is I can now cast Inkling Summoning, cast a Mage Duel, and then um, attack for six. Plus we have a 2-1 flyer <coughs> that can also brush pressure him. <coughs> the my tutor is an awesome card. Probably finding try, playing the fine removal for the Nautilus Professor. But if I take another hit on him, it's almost game over. Unless I flood really badly. Okay. He would need like a divide by zero, but but if he does, then uh, he might want to target the token, since giving me the ability to learn again with a Gnarled Professor is really not worth it, so I don't think. And then now we can play land into Blood Researcher, keep up Putrefy, and then it should be lethal if he doesn't deal with um, um, the Gnarled Pro Professor, since if he deals with any of these two powered creatures, um, I can still hit him for five and then two down to seven, so... He definitely needs an answer to this. Rise of Exodus, sure. Flash of Malice, okay. I think we can attack for two. And uh, do I play around a go blank? I don't think so. I think it's important to develop the mana base and then we can scry end of turn or cast Putrefy. And then we have two evasive threats that are that can easily just close out the game in a couple of hits. Waterfall Aerialist, we can easily lash a Malice. He might have a Snakeskin Veil, Fortifying Draught. Um, yeah, then we'll just cast Putrefying Response. land and scry end of turn, so yeah, pretty much had everything against this opponent. And currently three and one, let's keep this up.
Mm, okay, I mean, we have Leech Fanatic, one green man, and we have access to Emergence Sequence. It's a bit of a risky keep, but I think it's worth it, since if we get green mana, then Emergence Sequence is going to be quite awesome. <coughs> and being on the play, I don't really want to mulligan, so... I mean, at least we're hitting our lands. That's a fine creature I'm willing to kill. Although there could be worse. I think I'm fine offering to trade. And then probably save the lash for something else. Like an elite spellbinder. Probably make it hard to, harder for me to cast my mage duel or invocation, so it's going to be 8 mana, which is going to take a while. <coughs> but we managed to deal with a 2 drop and 3 drop at least. But the opponent knows about our, our problem here. Can we have our green mana, please? I swear to god. I'm running even split. This is the risk I have to take for um, doing this, but I can easily just lose this game if I don't. Um, Hit my emergence sequence here. Alright, a lash is fine. I guess I'll just cast on the eager first here before he untaps. So this is gonna be hard to deal with. And more black mana. All right, so we're just gonna get we're just gonna lose due to our mana issues, <coughs> and that's what happens in Magic. There's not much you can do about it. So, yep. And the opponent just had the creature every single turn. So, yep. And we can just cast a crushing disappointment and finally get our green land, which is not gonna do anything here. So, all right. I mean, maybe if he missed the turn playing a creature, we would have maybe. Stabilize, but um, that was definitely um, a very risky keep. I guess an opponent that had creatures every single turn. Wow, that was really <coughs> explosive. Just <coughs> good two drop into a good three drop into a good four drop. I mean, this is great, but we have no black mana. Do we try to do it again? I mean, worst case scenario, we can get to turn 4 with Valentin. You know what? Let's try it. We'll probably get run over, but who cares? The game doesn't like us anyway, so... I'm hoping I can at least get black mana on turn 3. Turn 2 Professor, okay. So opponents are already applying the beats, and uh, you know, black mana is nice. The question is, do I even want to cast Valentina at this point, since I can just cast her as a 4-4? I don't think so, so we'll just say go. Hmm. 
Do I want to lose a life and draw a card, or do I want to make a pest token? Probably fine losing a life and drawing a card, or... I mean, the pest token is also pretty nice, too. Um... You know, this is interesting. Uh, very interesting. Maybe it was fine making a pest token. Not sure. Yeah, let's make a pest token. This way, his 2-1 <coughs> doesn't get the free roll into my 1-1 uh, one, one as easily. And he's just going to hit me for 1 in the air, which is fine. And I might be fine just trading off with the Blood Mage here, and then, um... I mean... Um... Yeah, this is interesting, the notes. I might want to keep the 2-1 back. I don't know. I think we attack with both. And if he trades for the 2-1, that's fine. And we'll cast our bomb half of the, of the card creature. And I can also just gain life with Infuse of Vitality and <coughs> pop my token if I have to. If he has removal for this, that's quite a problem, though. Swords, okay. Still getting 4 life. I guess it isn't that bad, but uh, definitely a solid removal spell. And hopefully I can uh, fight this off or deal with this later. Lasher Mouse would have been great. Um, yeah, I guess I just need to attack for one and pass. Hopefully Lash the... Um, just bring something in the turn. Hunt is great. And by hunting, I do want to find my second black mana. So we'll just cast this. And then f finally find our second black source. And then play it. And then attack for one. And then if we get a land, we can play Leyline Invocation and fight the Stone Rise Spirit. Or something large as well. Stonebound Mentor is okay. Gnarled Professor? Hmm, that's pretty good too. Um, yeah, maybe you might just want to do Gnarled Professor into Infuse of Vitality or Infuse first and then Gnarled Professor, not sure. Um, you know what? Actually, let's just do the Leyline Invocation. Let's not waste time, just be mad efficient as they go. He most likely has some sort of uh, Exile spell for the 6-6. Wandering Arcade is a complete bomb. <coughs> um, this is tough. Guess I can Mage Hunters and pay two for it, so that's not bad. Find chopping the three three. So I can cast Gnarled Professor and also Infuse of Vitality and learn. Alternatively, I can Umbro Juke him and then cast a Blood Researcher. Lots of options. Um, yeah, let's move to combat first to see what he has. Probably it's the Exile effect, I have to imagine. Or he's just going to take six. 
which is a ton of damage. Um, yeah, let's just grab the Gnar Professor here. And then, what do I want to grab? Maybe, um... Inkling Summoning, and then say go. And we can keep up Infuse if he has a removal spell for the Gnar Professor, we'll see. Guess he wants to exile just to scry. This deck definitely doesn't look bad. It's looking like what <coughs> Gorho is supposed to be doing. That's fine. She probably has another removal spell to chain together. Sure. But he had to two for one himself just to deal with six six, and I can always just infuse with the um, Null Professor. So I could just attack with all next turn because if he, he because even if he chumps the Professor, <coughs> I can give my um, one one token um, Death Touch. Now if we want to put, name the spirit first, and then we'll just cast Infuse with Vitality, which is pretty gross. I guess the Death Touch allows me to hit for one and trample over for the rest. Yep. <coughs> and then it would have came back and allowed me to learn again, so... Professor is really awesome. So I think we're currently 4 and 2, we definitely have a long way to go, but um, overall, <coughs> at least we got back most of our gems. Well, we have three drops, no two drops, but there's still three drops, so I'll keep. Hunt, okay. So Humbro Juke is not looking good in this matchup since he can just stack his uh, tokens. So what do I want to do next turn? I could make a 2-1 at instant speed. And start applying pressure in the air. I could also just Cal's Blood Mage and draw a card, take one and hit him on the way back. Because I don't really care about a 1 1 pest token this early on. Yeah, and I do just want to draw cards, honestly. I could also just play the Servant, which is fine. Um, he's most likely going to stay back with the 1 1 then. But the fact that this can trigger life gain synergies with um, something in the future is good. But it does hit harder. But maybe Callous Blood Mage can give me more options by drawing cards, so I think I like that. So yeah, oops, clicked on the wrong one. Should have um, actually um, drew, drawn a card, drawn a card suit to allow us to get the Witterbloom Pledge Mage a lot quicker. Pledge Mage, okay. At least we got our fourth land somehow, so we'll just say go. Or just play the Servant. Um... Yeah, this is interesting. Um, I mean, the Servant does hit harder. Umbrojuke can give us a flyer, though, so I think we just say go, take two, and then play Umbrojuke into, like, Winterbloom Pledge Mage. And go from there. I could also just Putrefy the Lower Hole Pledge Mage. But there's probably bigger stuff fish to fry, so... I'm not too concerned about it. I think I'm fine taking two. And then I think I'll make the flyer end of turn. 
And then I can attack with the 1-1 one, one and the 2-1, and I'm totally fine with that. And then, once I'm able to resolve the Witterbloom Pledge Mage, I can start getting life with the Magecraft to enable Blood Researcher, so maybe I should have hung, hung on to the um, Umbral Juke. Maybe see a removal spell here, because see a rise, yep. Rise of Exodus. Am I fine trading the Callous Blood Mage? Like, it's not that bad. But I'm fine just taking three as well. I can play land, I guess I can Blood Researcher and Servant to grow it. That's a good one. Guess I'll be taking four. And hopefully the opponent's out of removal so I can putrefy something better. So maybe he's forced to keep the 1 1 token back. Gnarled Professor is nice, but maybe just want to cast a giant invocation here. Then I'm fine just attacking for one or just staying back. Maybe stay back this time, say go. <coughs> and hopefully he's out of removal, but that's hard to imagine in a Mardu control deck with Flunk's Rise of Exodus. I think I'm trading here. And if he's going to use a combat trick, at least he's wasting his spells. Could just be the trample learn trick, I think. That's okay. I mean, with that out of the way, at least I can start attacking. You could have an expel, but you don't play around expel, do you? Nope. Could maybe chump lock. Action with the one to grab. Could grab life gain, but I think I like the second inkling summoning. Then we can play a tap land and say go. Could see her expel on the 6 6, which can slow me down. Well, he's just gonna go home. I mean, I can just chump the 3 2. Sure, I mean, I might, I might as well just, just putrefy the. Uh, the uh, token then, if it wants to go in hardcore like that.
I think I'm fine with this trade since I should have um <coughs> I <coughs> since I putrefied it to answer something else, and you could also have a trick here, which I can blow him out with. Yep. And this is just a complete blowout. Yeah, <clears throat> this is why instant speed removal is very powerful. Since you never know what weird pump tricks the opponent has. Alright, so currently 5 and 2, we still have a long way to go. Haven't seen our bomb, uh, Lizette, still shine, or Valentine. But overall, Putrefying and Gnarl Professor have been powerful over performers. And one copy of Leylight Invocation, also pretty solid. Opening hand doesn't seem amazing. I mean, it seems all right. We can maybe draw into something, but it's overall just very mediocre. I think I'll try it still, <coughs> since I hate mulliganing. And we still have um, we still can we can still play a turn four play, and maybe top deck into a two drop or something. So, and as I say that, <coughs> we're just gonna take four, I guess. Maybe Dame Bogot Hole Eater can buy us a turn. And he, has, he just has a guiding voice on this 2-1, so... Yeah, sometimes if you don't have 2 drops, that's going to become a problem. At least he's going to only hit hit us for 6. We can block for one turn, maybe play Witterboom Pledge Mage and survive, hopefully. Yep. Wool Eater can maybe sack itself. Gain some life, draw some cards, and then hopefully we can just block the opponent off. <coughs> he did miss his land drop, so... Maybe we can come back from that. Ooh, Gnarled Professor. Yeah, I like my Gnarled Professor. And I think I like the Pest Summoning since I might want to sack things to the Daemogoth Void Eater. So this is looking quite good. The question is, do I block it? I think I do. Hopefully no first strike make a treasure trick. Okay, I mean, it's not the worst, but... At least it's gone. Sometimes you just hit your land drops and wins and win folks. Still didn't hit his land drop, wow. That's fine. I guess I just want to mage duel that maybe. So I guess I could just play pest summoning. Play Hunt for Specimens. Grab, grab an Inkling Summoning Token, and I think this is just GG here. Since he's just stuck on two lands. And against a Witterbloom deck with a 5 5 and 3 1 1s. Definitely not the place you want to be. Maybe Scenic Spell. Pilgrim of the Aegis, that's fine. I'm fine if this trades for a pest. I could also just kill it with Mage Hunters, but I think that's a little bit too ambitious. Um, you know what, let's just play the Demo God for fun. And that's just another lethal threat. Basically force a chump, but even if he does, I can kill him with two of these, so, yep. <clears throat> Alright, currently 6-2. and two. Um, Yeah, maybe this is my first 7-win vi Witterbloom video. Again, I've stayed multiple times Witterbloom. I don't really like as much, but if it comes together with the powerful rares and uncommons, then uh, it's worth going to Witterbloom. 
And I think it might be slightly better than Lorehold, not sure, but they're both considered a worse. Um, because again, the reason is that Witterbloom just doesn't have great threats. Um, even though with all the good removals, the threats just aren't great. Um, and uh, they just don't have much evasion to help you close out. But uh, with bombs like... Uh, I mean, we, we still haven't seen Valentine shine, but um, we, the Gnarl Professor has pretty much saved our butts almost every single game. So I definitely take note of that. And we just need uh, one more win to um, to um, get to um, seven, and I can have my first seven win Winter Bloom video. But Blood Researcher is definitely... Blood Researcher and Hunt for Specimens, I think, are the most two important commons in the um, Witterbloom deck. This hand <coughs> is not bad, but nothing amazing. Turn 2, we don't have much, but turn 3 and 4, we can maybe do something, so I think I'll try it. Lash can maybe answer an early game creature, that could be a problem. And I think I'll just pull the trigger if you play something like a Prismari Apprentice, which can definitely become a problem, so... Sure. I mean, it baited out a heated debate, so I'm not going to complain. Okay, and then end of turn we can use Crushing Disappointment because it's at instant speed. But if he's stuck on lands with nothing to do, then I'm also fine. <coughs> Expressive Iteration, 2-man draw 2, very, very efficient card, very powerful. That's fine. I mean, we don't have second copies, but he can spy on my hand. And there's definitely better stuff for him to uh, test of talents and counter. It is a bit annoying though, but sure. He can see my entire deck, which is kind of cute. Pledge Mage is going to be a little bit difficult for him to deal with. Valentine is also great, but I think we just want to draw, draw the Pledge Mage out since it's mana efficient. Then eventually we can just drop Valentine and maybe keep up Infuse with Vitality to protect her. I do need another green source though. So definitely not going to be the easiest, and then he knows about the Mage Duel and Infuse, so he's kind of in a rough spot. So I think we just attack for 5, and then even if it bounces it back, I can still cast something here. Yeah, if I'm playing land into the Mythic Rare. Unfortunately no Infuse, but we just want to develop the board in this spot. <coughs> and apply as much pressure as possible. And then we also, again, have Infuse with Vitality to protect our creatures, so... Pillar Drop Warden is fine, I can always fight that off. Kelpie Guide is fine as well, and I can also fight that off. I think we just want to fight the Pillar Drop Warden right, I mean, the Kelpie Guide's also a problem. So I think we just want to fight the Kelpie Guide first. So he doesn't tap our stuff down. We can gain some life. Pay mana to make our guys larger. And then attack for 12. And we can always reanimate one of our threats. With the infuse, so we'll see go. Alright, sweet. Man, I should get seven wins with Witterbloom, okay? So I guess it's not that bad after all. When it comes together, <coughs> it's really good. <coughs> I mean, it's pretty solid. But I could definitely see it having issues um, against, like, the blue decks, because 
Blue has so much card advantage that it's hard for the grindiness of Witterbloom to um, to uh, to outvalue the blue decks. But if you have an aggressive Witterbloom deck with lots of removal, blood researchers, ways to gain life, then um, that can usually get there. So sweet, we managed to get a uh, seven wins with uh, Witterbloom. So I guess it's not that bad after all. Even though I've talked a lot of trash about it, we still managed to get the seven, and that's pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, the deck looks solid. Six drop, five drop, um, some decent fours, triple blood researcher, which I'm a big fan of, and I think a very important component in these um, <coughs> Word and Bloom decks. Otherwise, you don't have enough threats to close out. Spring Main Servant, kind of filler, but still has a nice synergy with the blood researchers. I like the double mage duel, has great removal spells. Um, Umbral Juke, really solid. Callous Blood Mage as well. Infuse, like, I like one, one, I like this as a one of, but it's a very situational card. Uh, Obviously, I will never play two copies since it's not direct removal, but I can definitely help you out if you need to do chump blocks or um, get in some attacks with a large creature. Just infuse can just completely blow the opponent out. Like in one of our matches, our twos aren't amazing, but you know, in our early in some of our early games, we had the emergence sequence out on turn two, and that was quite powerful. Hunt for specimens, allowing us to learn for either inkling something and pet something, was also quite powerful. So uh, yeah, um, can't believe we managed to get to seven with this. Even though, again, I've talked a lot of crap about the um, Witterbloom deck, it still managed to overperform when it comes together. Like, I can see, like, a really powerful Witterbloom deck with the wall on turn two, and then into Blood Researcher, you can just keep gaining life and growing growing the Blood Researchers along with the uh, Witterbloom Apprentice. So, uh, yeah, definitely pick up the Blood Researchers early if you can in the uh, Witterbloom decks. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to close out. Um, and then, yeah, we also have some nice lessons to learn, so... Yeah, overall, can't believe I got it. Wasn't really expecting it since, again, not a big fan of Witterbloom, but um, yeah, let's just, um, I guess, claim our prizes, collect our rewards, and laugh at those who uh, managed to not get six, seven wins doing this sealed open. And um, let's celebrate. Pack one, pick one, Strixhaven. What would we take here? Um, Eliminate, Mortality Spirit, Killian, all very strong cards. I would probably take Eliminate over Mortality Spirit, but between Killian and Eliminate is pretty interesting to note. Killian is really powerful, especially if you do end up in, um, in uh, whatchamacallit, Silver Quill. And definitely, I think it's reasonable to take Killian over Mortality Spear. But Eliminate keeps you open, and then um, Witterbloom, as we found out, isn't that bad after all. So probably still take Eliminate here, just to stay open. But uh, there's a chance if uh, we end up in either Witterbloom or um, or Silver Quill, one of these powerful spells can wield, and I'd still be happy. So just take Eliminate and stay safe. Conspiracy Theorist is pretty cool. Um, better in Lorehold, where you have um, Pump Tricks and Combat Tricks to protect this. Um, and this can just gain nice value by casting in, um, a, a card from your Graveyard. To get back, uh, it's pretty nice fun in Prismari too, since you're able to uh, uh, discard before blockers and get an instant from the graveyard and cast it right away. Discard is can be quite fun. Overall, I don't think it's like a very impressive card, and definitely has some weaknesses, but it can definitely be very strong in circumstances. But <coughs> it can be very strong in some circus, some circumstances, <coughs> and also very weak in other circumstances. Excuse me. But I would still probably take it out of this pack over Prismari Pledge Mage and Explosive Welcome, which is definitely really powerful in the teamer control decks if you're looking to splash. Um, Quandrix is really good with, with uh, the team, the Prismari Colors, since this, the Prismari Colors are looking to cast very expensive spells, and if you can just ramp into the <coughs> Explosive Welcome, it's pretty busted. But just going to take Conspiracy Theorists out of this pack. Uh, Quandrix Command, Professor Symbology, and Fractal Summoning. Has to be Quandrix Command. This card is just incredibly powerful. Great card to splash for. And probably one of the better common, uh, better commands like Lorehold Command. Um, it can bounce back tokens. Can blow creatures out that try to use Pump Tricks. And you can just put two counters onto a creature to uh, get a nice block. So I think I have to take Quandrix Command over Professor here. But uh, if Quandrix Command wasn't in this pack, I would take Professor. Since it's just a cheap way to learn. And just a really solid, especially on turn two. Fragile Summoning would be my third choice since it's a lesson and can go in multiple blue or green decks. Brainstorm is okay, but I wouldn't take it over these other three cards. 
And don't mind the coughing, guys. I have my vaccine, so I'm just trying to uh, recuperate. Wow, Mizzix Mastery. Miz Mizzix Mastery is a complete bomb if you can play this in the straight-up Prismari control deck. Because basically, you just need to play a bunch of removal spells, and then in the late game, um, you basically um, just cast this with Overload and then cast those spells again. It's basically 8 mana win the game. So it's going to be hard to take Mizzix Mastery over Radiant Scroll Wielder, Scroll Wielder but Radiant Scroll, Scroll, Scroll Wielder is also just a bomb as well. Probably take them both over Humiliate, which is probably the second best card in this pack. Clever Lumimancer, if you are in the right Silver Quill deck, can come together, but it's not going to be as best in every Silver Quill deck. You want to play this with multiple Guiding Voices and one, one mana tricks. But uh, between these two, yeah, it's hard. Mizzix Mastery is just a mana win the game, right? Um, yeah, it's just too busted. The Radiant Scroll Wheeler, still great in Prismari. Feels like more of a Prismari card that uh, wants to be, wants a splash of white to enable Scroll Wheeler since it can just bring back all your instances and sorceries at random. This card is definitely a powerful bomb as well. So it's hard. I mean, I guess the Mizzix Mastery has a lot more <coughs> flexibility and less to splash, but it's going to be at its best in the Prismari control deck. You can still play this in the lore hold deck with lots of instances and sorceries, but I don't know. Both of these are great. Probably still take Mizzix Mastery because um, it's it doesn't rely on having to survive on the battlefield, doesn't rely on being splash, and you just cast it for eight in the late game and win. And even if you don't, you can still cast this for four mana and get your best removal spell and kill something. But uh, Radiant Scroll Wheeler is also bomb and really close as well. So. Um, this pack sucks. Sign and Blood is okay, um, but you still two, lose two life, and you but you still draw two cards. Probably just a Creative Outburst as a fine top end removal spell. It's actually not too different from um, the uh, Elemental Masterpiece, honestly, since it's kind of overcosted. It deals five damage, draws a card. It's kind of like a more expensive Rawls Outburst, which is the card in Ward Spark, which was deal three damage at instant speed for four mana. Um, put one card. Look at the top three cards. Put one in your hand. Put the rest, rest to rest of the two in your graveyard. Um, but overall, this pack just looks pretty abysmal. I would probably just take Creative Outburst in case I end up in Prismari. But it's also not a good, easy card to splash for if you're in the teamer color since it's double red. Uh, this pack I would probably take Return Pass color. Just a great card in general. Really solid in the uh, in either Prismari splashing white or just straight up lore hold since you can just bring back your best instant or sorcery. Karak Wrangler is okay, but 5 mana 3 3 is very bad as a stat line, and then you still need to get two Magecraft triggers to get this to grow. Whereas the Quandrix Pledge Mage is just a three mana 2-2, two, two, which can just grow over time. Um, it's not by far any means unplayable, but definitely a little bit underwhelming, and has to go in the correct uh, Quandrix deck, I think, for this to happen. Pilgrimage Age is also a solid common, but probably take Return Pass Caller, which is undeniably really strong. And then just open up the vault, and there we have it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Finally got my first Witterbloom 7 wins, um, since I'm very opposed to Witterbloom and Lorehold, as you guys know. But um, it can come together, and it can work, so this uh, draft definitely proved me wrong. But still lead towards Bloom this set, if possible. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, thank you for watching. And as always, have a great day. Bye.